Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Sunnah Revival by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari Sunan to protect yourself from the evil eye. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is Mu'iz Bukhari recording for the Daily Reminder Network. This is part two of the last episode. And let me begin by answering the question that I left you all with. Do you think an individual could cast the evil eye upon his own self? The answer to that, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, is yes, there is a possibility. And this has been explained to us by the scholars, rahimahumullah, who state that this possibility comes under the second category, as was discussed in the previous episode, excessive admiration. Just as how you cannot look at your own children and harbor feelings of jealousy towards them. In general, it's admiration. When you start admiring your children excessively, it can result in, in, in the evil eye being cast upon them. Likewise, when an individual goes in front of the mirror and looks at his or her reflection, it's impossible for that individual to harbor feelings of jealousy towards himself. So basically, it is excessive admiration when an individual goes in front of the mirror and starts admiring himself or herself, it can result in the evil eye being cast upon that individual by that individual himself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. Let me give you a real life incident that took place. There was a caliph, a young caliph by the name Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik. He was a young, handsome caliph. One day he goes to the mirror and this has been narrated by people who were around him and this is mentioned in the books of history. He looks at the mirror and he starts to admire himself. He says, wow, what a dashing young boy along the lines of these words. How young you are, how handsome you are and you are the caliph, you are so powerful. He starts admiring himself. The people who were around him state that it was not even a month A month did not pass by after him uttering such statements that he suddenly and very mysteriously passed away. Allahu Akbar. There's another incident. It doesn't talk about uh, self-admiration, but then again about excessive admiration in terms of children. Urwa ibn Zubair, Urwa ibn Zubair, rahimahullah, once he dresses up his child, his young boy, he dresses him up very well and he takes him The young child, he takes him to the house of the caliph at that time, who was Walid ibn Abdul Malik. He takes him to his house. And the minute the caliph saw the boy, he admires the boy and he says, beautiful clothes you're wearing. You have, you know, dressed the child so beautifully. You're wearing such beautiful clothes. And afterwards, a few minutes pass by and they all go to the stables to have a look at the horses. The child was by one particular horse. When suddenly, for no reason at all, There was this horse which reared up all of a sudden, kicking the boy, resulting in that boy's neck snapping into two and the boy falling dead on the spot. Allahu Akbar. So scholars explain that these two incidents may have occurred due to the evil eye, due to excessive admiration. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. From this we understand that we should not go in front of the mirror and start admiring ourselves excessively. The sisters should not go in front of the mirror, make dark faces and think, look at how hot I am or look at how sexy I am. Nor should we males go in front of the mirror, start flexing our muscles and think, wow, I'm just so sizzling hot. Because number one, this results in a superiority complex, which is not good. And number two, it may result in the possibility of the evil eye being cast by ourselves upon ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Ameen. Now let me mention an action item or two in the form of a dua that can be read to protect ourselves from the evil eye of others. Number one. A'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tammati min sharri ma khalaq. Let me repeat. A'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tammati min sharri ma khalaq. As for the meaning, I seek refuge in the perfect words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of that which He has created. Number two. 
أعوذ بكلمات الله التامة من غضبه وعقابه ومن شر عباده ومن همزات الشياطين وأن يحضرون Let me repeat. أعوذ بكلمات الله التامة من غضبه وعقابه ومن شر عباده ومن همزات الشياطين وأن يحضرون As for the meaning, I seek refuge in the perfect words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I seek refuge in the perfect words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his punishment and his anger. Min, min ghadabihi wa iqabi, From his anger and punishment. And from the evil of his slaves, from the evil promptings of the devils, and from their presence. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from all kinds of evil. Ameen. Please don't forget to share this video around as much as possible to inspire an amazing Sunnah revival. I look forward to seeing you all the next week, insha'Allah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Support the Dawah. Donate now. Go to thedailyreminder.org slash donate.